Turn with me to the book of Ephesians, Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus, chapter 1. One of the members of the congregation will begin reading with verse 3, Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians 1, verses 3 through 14. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory. Thank you. In Ephesians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul says, God has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. A couple of years, a couple of centuries after uh, Charlemagne, king of the Fra Franks, he was around 18, 800 and ar around uh, the millennium, first millennium, uh, one of his successors, sent a team to open the tomb of Charlemagne. And as the story goes, when they opened the tomb, they found a skeleton and it was sitting on a throne. Strange. And on the lap of the corpse was a book, the Gospel of St. Mark in, in Latin. Uh, Charlemagne had distributed lots of Gospels throughout his kingdom in order to help people become Christians. And his bony finger was on a passage, chapter 8, the Gospel of St. Mark, and it said, What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and yet lose his own soul? So when we look at blessings, we need to look at spiritual blessings first. Most people live their life by putting things around them and arranging their time in such a way so that some of their fantasies will make them feel good. We see some people in the area of sports. Uh, some people would say that Los Angeles right at this moment is truly blessed. We have the Lakers that seem to be on their way to winning a national championship. We have the Dodgers that seem to be on their way to winning the World Series. We have the Rams that's undefeated. And we are a team that are a city that is most blessed in sports right at this moment. Now, all those things can change. But people sometimes put things around them. They become a fan so that they can feel good when their team gets more points than the other team. But we need to put things into perspective. God has a spiritual blessing for us. And if you don't have the spiritual blessing, no matter how many things you put around you, no matter how many fantasies are turning out good, you're not blessed. Now, in, in the sports teams, 
there was a, a notion that certain teams were cursed and certain teams were blessed. There was a rivalry between the Boston Red Sox and the New York Yankees, and there was a fan lore myth that the Boston Red Sox were cursed because they traded away Babe Ruth. And the Yankees were blessed because they received him and, and then they built Yankee Stadium. It was the house that Ruth built. And so there was this notion of blessing and curse. There are some people you know that no matter what they do, it turns out bad. No matter what they do, they, they just can't seem to get ahead. But when we look at what the Bible says about spiritual blessing, that's the most important thing to have. Sometimes we, we look and we say, it, blessing has to do with the amount of money you have or the amount of possessions and so on. We, we look at the world and we say, Oh, how blessed we are financially, materially, because half of the world live on less than a dollar a day. I, I can't imagine how to do that. I mean, it's hard to go and, and feed yourself with enough calories to sustain yourself on the dollar menu at McDonald's. Half the world live on less than a dollar a day. Unbelievable. You would say that they are cursed, but not before God. The Bible says that those who are poor in this world may be rich in faith. Let's look at some of the spiritual blessings that the Apostle Paul was telling the Ephesians about. You are blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Uh, for he chose us before creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. That's a blessing. When God looks at us, he smiles. He looks at us through the blood of Jesus, through the cross. And even though we are not perfect, he still smiles. Remember in the movie, 76 Trombones. Right at the end, everybody who was a part of the city who was trying to, to uh, bring this rascal to justice kept saying, don't let the band play. Don't let the band play. And it was a bunch of kids that were learning music and they had bought musical instruments and then the band played. And it was horrible. But because it was their kids they all smiled. And that was the end of it. When God looks at us, he smiles. We may not be perfect, but he sees things from eternity and he knows that as we stay with him, we will be conformed to the image of his son and he will build within us the fruits of the spirit and we will become what he wants us to be. He chose us in him before the creational world to be holy and blameless. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ. We're part of the family of God. Every now and then you need to pause and think about that and say, God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to be part of your forever family. It's nice to be part of family, not to be just alone. So many people are just alone and they feel really alone. And you need to just stop yourself at that moment and say, okay, God, thank you for adopting me and choosing to love me. Sometimes, People have babies, and they don't want the baby. It disrupts their life. But God adopted us because he wanted us. And it says, we are to be the praise of his glorious grace. God wants to point to us and say, look 
That's grace in action. That's part of the blessing of God. And we need to just stop and say, that's the blessing. That's what I want to look at and feel good about. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Sometimes we look at God and a stern judge and he's going to bring retribution. But right now, the Apostle Paul says to the church at Ephesus, God is rich in grace. And he redeemed you through the blood of his son, Jesus. And you have forgiveness of sins. Isn't it great to have a new beginning? Something goes wrong, you don't do things, and then you get a restart. God wants us to get on with our life with him and not get held up with mistakes and sin and other things. And that's why he offers to us forgiveness. He has lavished on us this forgiveness and redemption with all wisdom and understanding. He thought this through. It wasn't just that he felt pity toward us. He thought this through. There's wisdom and understanding that as he gives us grace, then we grow in grace. And he has made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to put into effect when the times have come of reached fulfillment to bring things in heaven and earth together. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan that works everything in the conformity of, in order that we, who were the first believe, might be the praise of his glory. Predestined. God is determined to make certain things happen. And if we get a hold of what he's going to make happen, then we will flow with the power of God. What is God determined to make happen? That we might be conformed to the image of his son. That we might be a son of glory, a person of grace. Be filled with the spirit and bear fruit of the spirit. He is determined to make this happen. We are predestined for that. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel, salvation, and having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. One of the blessings of God is the Holy Spirit makes you feel that you're part of the family of God, but the Holy Spirit also guides us and leads us and helps us make decisions and helps us with our feelings. Now, sometimes people have the blessing of God and have the Holy Spirit, but they don't receive from him. Instead, they choose to live in fear, they choose to live in bitterness. Yet God offers through his Holy Spirit hope. He offers through his Holy Spirit peace. He offers through his Holy Spirit a sound mind. Now he says here that the, the Holy Spirit is a dis deposit of our inheritance. Uh, the general uh, amount for a de deposit in the, the time of Paul was about 10%. You put about 10% down and then you make payments as you go along on that. So about 10%. So if the Holy Spirit is 10%, then we can expect more and more as we experience the presence of God. Now, Jesus had something to say in the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 6. Remember, the Gospel of St. Matthew in chapter 5 starts out with the Beatitudes. Blessed and blessed. Blessed are the peacemakers, for 
they shall be called the sons of God. And uh, blessed are the poor in spirit. And it had a bunch of things that were a person was truly blessed that you would not necessarily uh, expect. He says, if if even though you are you're, you're mourning, God will comfort you because his Holy Spirit is there. But then he went on to say, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Now, Jesus had told a story about uh, how that people want to have good clothes and, and fine food and 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 all kinds of status and things. And he says, uh, look at, look around. He says, the, the birds of the field, God takes care of them and they neither sow nor harvest and work so hard. And, and the lilies, uh, they're so beautiful out there and uh, they don't s s uh, spin or, or sow or anything. And if God takes care of these things, he'll take care of you. And then he said, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. When you seek first the blessing of God, then the material blessings will be added. Seek first the blessing of God and the material blessings will be added to you. Now there's some things that you probably need to think about in terms of how do we receive the blessing of God, the spiritual blessing of God. Well, the first thing, you need to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. God has offered his Son, and he who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son does not have eternal life or spiritual life or spiritual blessing. So we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord. And it's pretty simple. You just ask him to be your Savior. Ask him to be your Lord. Put your faith in him that he is raised from the dead. And when he died on the cross, it was for your sins. And that he is worthy to be the leader of your life. Now, I oftentimes like people to pray along with me. So we're talking about receiving the spiritual blessing of God. <clears throat> and the first step is receiving Christ as Savior. <clears throat> so you would pray a prayer, something like that. Dear God, I need you. I receive Jesus as my Savior. I receive him as my Lord. I believe that he died on the cross for me and that you raised him from the dead. And someday you'll raise me to be with you in heaven. I receive Jesus as my Savior and Lord. That's the kind of prayer. God sees your heart. And when you ask Jesus to be your Savior and Lord, he will come in and do that. Now, the second thing, is you want to receive the Holy Spirit. And in the Gospel of St. Luke, the Jesus was preaching and teaching, and he said, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. And knock, and the door shall be opened to you. And he says, Which of you, being evil here, will give to your son a, a snake, uh, instead of a fish or a stone, instead of a, a loaf of bread. No, you know how to give good gifts to your, your children. How much more with your Father in heaven give you the Holy Spirit if you ask. And so every now and then when you're down, you say, Dear God, fill me with your Holy Spirit again. Help me to feel your presence and worship you. And every now and then we need to pause and do that. You know, some people every single day pause and ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then they're quiet for a while and then they listen to what God has to say. And then they, they pause for a while and they are thankful and they praise God 
for something. Some people believe that when they open the Bible and they're filled with the Holy Spirit, God will give them insight. So every day they open the Bible, sometimes very systematically, and say, okay, God, speak to me. Some of the great ministers of the Bible would read read the Bible on their knees and they would pray that way. Okay, Lord, speak to me from your word. And God would speak to them. And when they preached the word, it was with power. Third thing in receiving the blessing of God is you need to play for his team. The church is God's team. He has a game going on of redeeming the world from evil. You need to play on his team. Now, some people don't realize that there's a game going on. I remember uh, watching some uh, children play soccer. They were like five and six years old. And they're, everybody run into the ball. And then one stopped and went off and was chasing a butterfly. That was their game. But it wasn't the game that they had a uniform on. And that's sometimes what we're doing. God has called us to redeem people. And what are we doing? Off chasing fantasy butterflies. God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Let's receive the spiritual blessings of God and then claim the verse that says, seek first the spiritual blessing of God and then all these things, the material blessings, will be added unto you, Matthew 6, 33. Let's close in prayer. Our Father and our God, we thank you for blessing us. We receive your blessings in Jesus Christ. We receive Jesus as our Savior and Lord. We receive the Holy Spirit, and we want to give a good performance and play on your team. In Jesus' name, amen.